Welcome to Daily. Today we are in Ephesians 2. If you have already read this on your own or you want to read it on your own, go ahead and skip ahead this part to the application. We're going to read it out loud together right now, but before we do, let's say a quick word of prayer. God, we thank you for your word and we just ask Holy Spirit right now that you would come and that you would help us to understand your word, help us to apply it to our lives and just help it to change us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews, who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now, you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy people for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. All right, remember who this letter was from. It was from Paul to the church of Ephesus that he had planted a number of years earlier. Yesterday we talked kind of about the big picture and his prayer for them. And as he continues along, he's kind of breaking down what this relationship with God really looks like to make sure that they understand it. It's good. He's really laying a lot of foundation work, which is good for you and me as well. He actually says in the first verse of Ephesians 2, once you were dead, right? He says, you were dead. It's an interesting comment that he makes. He basically says, we were all the walking dead. He says, you guys who were there, you're pretty much like zombies. You might've been walking around, but you were actually dead. And I think he'd say the same to us. He says, you were kind of alive, yet you were still dead walking around and living. He says, kind of in the situation you were in. And I think this is interesting because I think a lot of us, before we meet God, we might think like, well, I was sinful or I was just like kind of on my own and then I met God. But it's interesting because he kind of draws a different picture, not like the idea of like we were kind of doing our own thing, then we met God. Like either we're going to obey God or we're going to do our own thing. He actually says that we were obeying the devil when we were doing this. In verse two, he says about the devil, 
He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. He said there's a lot of people who refuse to obey God. They might think it's like, well, I'm going to do my thing. But he says, actually, that's not the case. You're just listening to a different spirit, the devil who's telling you what to do, whispering things into your ear, but his plan for your life is destruction. His is gonna take you in totally the wrong direction. He says, that was all of you. All of you are following the devil's dictates in your life. You and me were as well. But then it's interesting because verse four, he says, but God, and I love that. Whenever you see like, but God, in the Bible, you can like underline it, you can circle it, because it's about to get good. Because over and over and over again in God's word, it's like that. It's like, here's the situation, but God. And that's when something really good is gonna happen. He says that God ended that situation of us being the walking dead, kind of following the devil. <coughs> Excuse me, when Jesus died and he resurrected, it says that when Jesus resurrected, it was basically like that new life came to us as well. And we kind of resurrected into new life with him. That when Jesus came back for the dead, we finally came to life. And he explains how this looks to us. So we, we don't have this twisted because we really can. When it talks about us understanding what Jesus has done for us, our salvation, we can get it messed up. And this is a great verse, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. This is like a cornerstone verse you should memorize. I've memorized it in my life. Here's what it says. God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. He says that Jesus has saved us by his grace. It's a gift. You didn't earn it, so you can't boast about it. That's important for us to realize when we start thinking about our faith, that it's not something we can earn. It is a gift that is given to us because of his generosity. Now, he continues in verse 11. He says, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. Another statement to these people, he says, you Gentiles were all outsiders. And some of us would be like, who are these gentle people that he's talking about, right? Uh, gentle people, Gentiles, that's actually you and me. There's the Jewish people who came from the line of Abraham, whom God had kind of chosen and given him a promise. All of his descendants were the Jewish people, the chosen people of God. And anybody who's not Jewish, when we read the word Gentile, it just means everybody who's not Jewish, you and me. He says, so you guys were, were outsiders. You know, the Jews, they kind of knew about this God, but you were an outsider. But then in verse 18, he says, Jesus shifted all of this. Here's what it says in verse 18. Now, all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. He says, now, Jew, Gentile, no difference. You both come to God through Jesus. And this is important for us to understand too, especially when we start thinking about like different faiths. If you know Jewish people, if you, you understand the Jewish faith, they still need Jesus as well. They're people who understand man, the Father God, but they haven't understood his, his Messiah that he sent in Jesus. That's why there literally is Messianic Jews. They're Jewish people. They're not going to renounce their Judaism, but they believe that Jesus really is the Messiah. And we need to pray that Jewish people would experience the Messiah as well. He says, all of us come the same way by Jesus now, whether we're Jew or whether we're Gentile. And he says, because of this, verse 19, we now are members of God's family. Verse 20, we are his house and his spirit lives in us, that all of us experience the same salvation as a gift by God. Let me ask you this as you reflect today, okay? Are you still walking around dead? He said that we were the walking dead before Jesus interacted with us. And he explains this in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, that it's a gift that he gave us and we just believed and we received it. Have you received that gift or are you still trying to earn your salvation? Are you trying to do good things? Do you think if you learn enough about God, if you do enough good things that you can equal out the bad things that you did? Because if that's the case, you might not have accepted his free gift and you could still be a zombie walking out of there, a religious zombie, but a zombie nonetheless who needs this free gift of salvation. If you have experienced it, live it out, man, do it. Some of you guys are all sad and you're all sour walking around. You need to realize you're alive and you need to get excited about it right? But last, I want to encourage you to act. Would you do me a favor today? Here's a great step that you can take today. Memorize Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 if you have not. Memorize it. Write it down, print it out, right? 
screenshot it on your phone and memorize that verse today because that one is so, so critical. God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. That is a great verse for you to memorize to set you up for future success. Let me know in the comments if you have any other thoughts from this. If you have any other questions, I'll try to answer them. Go out there today and move forward by faith.